Welcome to Seven Days of Science. Here with you is a nice bird and a horny piece of garbage bird who needs to learn that they're not supposed to go on people's heads. No, no heads. No heads. We've, we've talked about this. It's Seven Days of Science. Starting off the news this week, new data has shown that last year was Europe's warmest on record. But more interestingly, it has shown that Europe is warming up faster than the rest of the world. 2019 was the second hottest year on record for the globe, but the hottest for Europe, which saw a near two degree increase from the end of the 19th century on average in the last five years, instead of the global increase of just over one. Some have pointed out that this rise has suggested that the nations in Europe are not keeping to the Paris Climate Agreement, despite increased environmental action by pressure groups. Also this week was the description and naming of a new species of prehistoric pygmy sperm whale, a member of the family Cogeidae from the Miocene of Peru. The paper explains how the two surviving members of Cogeidae, the dwarf and pygmy sperm whales, are the last remnants of a once highly diverse lineage. And this new species, Scaphocogea tatajpi, is an example of this past diversity. The description of this taxon has resulted in the family being split into two main groups, and the anatomy of its skull indicates that it was a fairly generalist feeder. Additionally, it indicates that the late Miocene Peruvian coastal system was a key area for sperm whale evolution, with at least four different species in the superfamily coexisting here. And now over to Ben, who, interestingly this week, has some news for you all. Thanks, Doug. Well, first up, we have the very interesting discovery of a new sauropodomorph from Upper Triassic rocks in Lesotho. This newly described dinosaur, named Columa Lumo Ellenbergerorum, is actually based on a quite historic specimen, having been first found in 1955 and mentioned now and then in a few papers, but never being officially published until now. The bones that have enabled the paleontologists to name this new species come from a few different individuals, but together they've produced a fairly good overview of its anatomy. The animal was still bipedal and not a true sauropod, and therefore not involved with the origin of the group, but at an estimated length of 9 meters this would have been a pretty giant creature, one of the longest dinosaurs around at the time it lived. And also in the news is the naming of a new Middle Triassic ichthyosaur species from Nevada, Symbospondylus dulferi. The fossils of this animal include a fairly complete skull as well as some material from the body, indicating a total length of about 4.3 meters. However, three other, much smaller sequences of vertebrae were also found in association with this individual, likely representing fetuses. This new taxon is therefore the second oldest record of viviparity, or live birth, in ichthyosaurs, in addition to providing paleontologists with more information on symbospondylid ichthyosaur evolution. So some pretty great discoveries this week. Back to Doug in the studio, and let's wish him a very happy birthday today. My birthday was yesterday. Nope. There he goes again. Anyway, that's it for this week's Seven Days of Science. I do hope you enjoyed it, and as always, we'll see you on Sunday.